What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Corset 2019. Obviously a relatively new set, but they are there are still some pretty exciting cards in this one. So hopefully you get something awesome. I do want to say as we're opening, uh, I am a little bit sick with just allergies. Not a huge deal, but uh, if I sound a little bit nasally or if I have any sniffing fits or anything like that, I do apologize. Uh, I don't want to cut the video, so I'll do the best I can not to have to do that. But our first card here is Inspired Charge. It's an instant uh, for two and two white. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until the end of the turn. This is a really powerful finisher uh, in like a red-white aggro deck. Uh, I did play a little bit with this set in Limited, and uh, the red-white like token generator kind of deck is fantastic. A card like this ends the game very, very quickly. I would much rather have the token generators first, obviously, because they will be good no matter what. Uh, Inspired Charge is not good in every single deck, so normally this is a card you want to pick up a little bit later on when you've already kind of defined that as your, your archetype. Uh, Dwindle is an enchant creature for two and a blue. Uh, the enchanted creature gets minus six, minus zero, uh, and when it blocks, destroy it. So this is a really interesting card. It's sort of pseudo removal. Uh, I have been pretty unimpressed with it. I feel like there's just better options for uh, actual removal in this set. So Dwindle, not my favorite, but it is actually playable uh, if you really just don't have anything else. It's a perfectly fine way to deal with a really strong creature. Giving it minus six is huge, obviously. That takes it down a lot. Uh, but it does it does still have that toughness, so it's going to be a little bit tricky to get through. Uh, obviously, if they block with it, it's destroyed, which is also great, but they do still get a free block out of it. So uh, in that case, it's not the best, but it isn't bad. It's one of those cards that if you if you have it, it's okay filler. Uh, Bog Stomper is a 6-5 vanilla creature for 4 and 2 black. Really not that exciting. It's just a, a big black creature, uh, which is perfectly fine if that's what you need. Uh, I generally am not excited about stuff like this. This is obviously a core set, so the power level is going to be a little bit down uh, in comparison to other sets, but a uh, 6-5 six, for 6 vanilla just isn't really all that exciting. I mean, if you need a finisher, I guess you play it, but there are better options. <laughs> Uh, Greenwood Sentinel is a 2-2 for one and a green and it does have vigilance so it doesn't tap obviously if you're attacking with it. I really like this creature. It's a solid two drop. A uh, 2-2 two, two for two is just kind of on par but giving it that vigilance just ups it just a bit. Uh, so in my mind this is probably the best card so far which is a little sad uh, but it isn't bad. It's actually a really solid two drop. Uh, Sky Scanner is a 1-1 one, one for three. Uh, it does have flying and when it enters the battlefield you draw a card so there is a, a blue white artifact synergy deck uh, that this loves to go in what's also great about this is that it does just go into any deck so it is a 1-1 flyer for three which isn't great but it is a flyer so hopefully it'll be able to ping for a damage or two but uh, being able to replace itself is actually really huge uh, so for that uh, i'd say this is a little bit better than the sentinel uh, Snapping Drake is a 3-2 flyer for 3 and a blue. Pretty straightforward just flyer, but it is a mid-range flyer, so it's a 3-2. It's going to get in the, air, in the air for some damage, which is good. Uh, and for 4 mana, it's really not bad value. I think I'd rather have this over the Sky Scanner, uh, just because this slots into anything that's just blue-white flyers. This is a little bit more powerful than the Sky Scanner, uh, so hopefully you're going to get a little more damage off. Uh, well... Lich's Caress uh, is a sorcery for three and two black. Destroy target creature and you gain three life. This is really solid removal in this set. Five mana is right on par. Four or five mana is really where you want to be for, for most of your removal. Uh, this is just straight up destroy any creature and then gaining three life. It's just kind of a bonus, but it's nice against certain matchups, especially if they're uh, aggroing you out or something like that. Gain three life, buffer your life total a bit, and take out one of their creatures. This is perfect. Premium removal for sure. Uh, Manalith is an artifact that can tap for any color of mana and it does cost three. Uh, this is really only something that you would play if you are kind of just in a jank all color deck. Uh, you can make that work. There are definitely instances where you can and this is one of the cards that help you get there. But generally speaking, I don't like Manalith. Uh, Take Vengeance is a sorcery for one and a white and it says destroy target tapped creature. So this again is really decent removal. Uh, I don't like that the creature has to be tapped. I've found that that is actually a huge drawback with this set. Uh, generally, your opponent is gonna be swinging in with their bomb, but you do still kind of have to take a hit because this isn't instant speed. Uh, and so I don't like it for that reason, uh, but it is powerful. It's definitely more efficient uh, in terms of mana usage than Lich's Caress, but 
I would much, I, I would much rather have the Lich's Caress just because you don't necessarily have to take a hit from a creature just to destroy it. So for that reason, not that big of a fan of Take Vengeance. Uh, Ghost Form, a sorcery for one and a blue up to two target creatures can't be blocked this turn. Not a huge fan of this card. It doesn't really seem to be that impactful. Yes, there are instances where it would be, uh, but those tend to be corner cases. So in my mind, this is not a high priority card. Uh, Rogue's Gloves is our first uh, uncommon. It is an equipment for two, and whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. The equipped cost is two as well. I generally don't like this card in limited. Uh, it just doesn't seem to impact the board enough. It's great to be able to draw a card for sure, but uh, you really have to be in the right board position, and because it's limited, you really can't bank on sculpting that board position as well as you could be in, say, constructed. And so for that reason, not as big of a fan of this. Uh, ooh, lightning strikes. So, uh, this is an instant for one in a red and it deals three damage to any target that is target player or target creature or target planeswalker player planeswalker. Same thing. Uh, I really like this card. This is very, very efficient removal or just burn to the opponent's face. Get in there for the last few points of damage. That's huge. Or dealing with some creatures early game. Fantastic. For that reason, I like it more than the Lich's caress. This is definitely on top as far as removal goes. Uh, last uncommon is Switcheroo. Uh, it's a sorcery for four and a blue. Exchange control of two target creatures. Uh, this is a really interesting card. I've not had good luck with it, to be honest. Uh, but there are definitely instances where you can swap something really terrible for something really good. Uh, and in that instance, it's fantastic. But uh, in a lot of cases, I found you're kind of just switching one for one on something that's like not great. Or it's a little bit better than what you have, but it doesn't really help you that much. Uh, you're really dependent on the opponent's deck being awesome, and so for that reason, I don't like this card. And then our rare is Death Baron, so it's a 2-2 for 1 and 2 black. Skeletons you control and other zombies you control get plus 1, plus 1, and have Death Touch. So this is obviously a very good lord for zombies and skeletons. Uh, I'm not sure if this is really worth taking in limited, though. Uh, obviously, it's a really powerful card. If you can get a lot of zombies and a lot of skeletons, great. But uh, the zombie skeleton deck is not one that I am super familiar with, uh, if I'm going to be honest. So I don't think that this is really worth it to take. Uh, just in general, you're banking on getting past a lot of zombies and skeletons and then always having this out to make them good. For that reason, I don't think it's actually all that powerful. And then we, of course, have a foul orchard, which enters the battlefield, taps, but does tap for black or green. Uh, definitely useful to have uh, two color lands in this set. But... In my opinion, it's a pretty easy lightning strike. Uh, I do think it's just the best card in the pack for limited. Uh, Death Baron, I could see a case for, so let me know in the comment section below if you feel like that's worth taking. I feel like it's not, but I might be wrong. So, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.